Hi, Matthew. Yes. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing great. Uh, so to start, you're slowly just like ticking off the nerdy boxes throughout your career and collecting them like little Pokemon. And so what is it? I don't want to call them genres because they're all different and it is kind of weird to just consider like them different genres. They're all just like nerdy properties. And so what is it about kind of collecting all of these different niche nerdy things for you that is kind of cool and exciting? Well, that was awesome. I love that as a first question. Um, you know, what's funny is that I don't feel like that's what I'm doing. I feel like I'm building things I'm excited about. And it just so happens that all the things I'm excited about are like the fandoms that we live in, right? Mm -hmm. um, like everything about the RPG space between, you know, fantasy, Dungeons and Dragons and all of that. Um, that's who I am. That's what I love. That's where I sort of live. Um, you know, the whiskey, uh, you know, just sort of made sense. I mean, building faster, building Gita and Grimm's and then doing faster perform and sort of like understanding um, nerd culture and that there's a real business opportunity there. And then mm -hmm. seeing the opportunity and sort of translating that other things uh it's just me following my charm rather than me collecting anything i mean i feel like i think that seth green does this really well actually is that he isn't speaking to fans he's speaking to himself like he is that is who seth green is like he is a giant fan um yeah. and i am a giant fan of this space right and so it's not like it's not a manipulation it's like you're just chasing your joy well, yeah, and it is like I mean, whiskey's an easy jump because if you like, like if if I had the chance to like make a wine brand that was a nerdy wine brand, I'd be like, great. I just yeah drink wine and like talk about nerdy things. That's easy, but it's like yeah. with D and D and things like that. Is it fun that D and D is becoming popular, or is it like well, that's kind of annoying because I mean, like I know my brother gets slightly annoyed when his more nerdier qualities but have become popularized because he's like yeah. great i got made fun of a bunch and now kids are cool yeah. if they like these things. your emo goth band is now <laughs> on tour with like pink yeah no yeah. I, I understand that i listen I, no for me like the more the merrier for me i think if the world played more you know sat around a table and played more rpg mm -hmm. games such as dragons pathfinder critical role like if, if you sat uh, and and sat in a table and, and and fought evil Republican and Democrat at the same table, and you're working towards bigger and better things, like the world would be a better place. Like storytelling, all those things revolve around this, this magical thing called storytelling. Mm -hmm. And frankly, we've fallen farther and farther away from that. And I think that that's one of the great things about this new renaissance in, in RPGs is that I think that people have gone through this phase of like, thinking the phone is the answer, or thinking that TikTok or Instagram or all of the Facebook is the answer. The reality is that's a one-way translation, a transaction. Mm -hmm. You're not ever getting anything back from a like, but sitting around a table and telling a story year after year, you know, week after week, year after year is incredibly human, mm -hmm. right? And so I, I think that that's, I, I think that this is a rejection of technology and a move back to who we are as people. That's a very fucking dramatic answer. But, and I think it's just the best way to spend a life. I mean, sitting around a table, destroying evil is the best way to spend a life, period. Yeah, and I mean, it's great. I Because, you know, Dungeons and Dragons having a little resurgence is really cool. Because, like, I love that dumb movie so much that just came out. I think that's so much fun. I love, like, that Stranger Things made it cool because I have a niece who's like, have you played? I'm like, I'm not talking to you about this. You're 13. I'm not doing this. Like, No, that's when you have the mentor. That's when you have to jump in and be like, I got you, boo. Watch this. This is the 20 sided die. But then they also were like, oh, like, have you heard this? And I'm like, I, you don't get to tell me, have you heard this with <laughs> music from the 80s? That's hilarious. No, 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 no. It's a show from the 80s. Yes, I've heard the music in Stranger Things. Thanks. That's but it is really cool though. I know I, I don't want to talk about struck things, but like you 
you do a lot of conventions and things and I think it's really cool but it is so funny to see the divide not a bad divide but the divide of what people know you from Mm because I am a child of the 90s but I know you from a very specific thing and then I have friends who know you from another very specific thing yeah and so for you as an actor how is it kind of like going to those conventions and seeing the like who knows you from what thing and having to switch those gears very quickly to like because they are very different (laughs) oh yeah like how they're going to approach you as a person yeah it's funny I um you know I used to be curious about how people find me or why they find me um and at this point I'm just grateful you know what I mean? Like at some point, if you're like a fan of SLC Punk, that tells me one thing. If you're a fan of Scream or Scooby Doo, that tells me something else. Mm-hmm. But the reality is that the thing I see in those lines all the time are people that are excited to 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 interact, right? And so the funny thing about those cons, I never really understood, is that. I always thought it was like a one-way transaction. I always thought it was like, oh, I'm making money off something I would give away for free. I sort of hate that transaction because I'm like, mm-hmm. I would give anything for money. But I realized the first con I ever did, I was like, oh no, it's not about that. It's about how you see people when they're with you, mm-hmm. right? How can you connect to somebody? How can you make somebody have a moment that's authentic? And, and I think that the longer I've been around, the more I appreciate how the the value of that impact to other people that you can change a kid's life that you can you know if, if there's a little queer kid out there and you see them and be like hey i fucking love you or mm-hmm. if you have a kid struggling with drugs or addiction or self-harm like you can see it a mile away and if you can just for that moment give them an, a sense that i i fucking care mm-hmm. um it's incredibly powerful and that's the reason to do those cons like oh it's like human 101 every time you do one i know it's really it's oddly rewarding to be uh available to the people in my life when yours are the some of the best videos of those and i say that because like what i was saying earlier is my friends came to my halloween party years ago dressed as scream and i'm a scooby-doo kid like through and through so i was always like oh i know matthew they're just shaggy and they were like what's wrong with you you're you're like two years older than us like you should know from scream i was like yeah sure but i was a scooby <laughs> so i knew right. shaggy and they're right. like something's wrong with you but i would like watch those videos and i was like they're very sweet how people are like reacting to like matthew lillard, yeah. like, lillard at these conventions and it's nice to I see. I try to avoid those videos i don't like watching it i'm like i don't want to see <laughs> I don't want to read the comments. I don't read the comments. I don't look at videos. I don't see reviews. I'm like, just let They're it very be. sweet, though. They're okay. very sweet. I love them. Uh, but it is really nice to see that. And now with this, like all of the kind of nerdy, dumb being accepted and really sweet because you can't see them. But I have a shit ton of nerdy tattoos oh, all over the place. Like but uh, with this whiskey and the D&D and just nerddom as a whole being cool as it were what for you is the most exciting part of all of this and you said it's you just getting to like Seth Green uh express that nerdy part of you but like what about like that whiskey brand was like the most exciting part yeah um it's a good question uh so a couple of things First, for my partner and I, Justin, he's in the film and television industry as well. He's a writer. Mm -hmm. I think that we chose our first character class, Paladin. The first bottle is called Paladin because a Paladin is a holy warrior who's on a mission to do something greater than. Um, And for us, you know, the idea of spending, we both have kids, we both have families, uh, and spending our entire careers and our adult lives waiting for people to give us permission to work um, is a horrible way to live life, right? Mm-hmm. And one of the things I've learned through Peter and Grimm's is that I can control my own destiny by creating things I'm excited about and building through time and energy and effort something I'm proud of. And so when building this, we're like, we named Paladin, the first ball of Paladin, because we have 
we want to do more than that. We want to be in control of our own destinies and we want to build things that we're excited about. I mean, Find Familiar Spirits, which is the parent company of, of Quest Send, is committed to building different verticals based on different fandoms. This is just the first. Like, we're going to continue. We are already in the process of developing other things. But the idea of being able to find something that we're excited about and put our time, energy, and effort into building something else other than just Quest Send is hugely empowering for us and rewarding um, for us as, as men, as people, right? So um, that's the... I don't know. I don't remember the question. <laughs> what was the question again? Like, why? I mean, that's the part to me is like, I was like, you were answering it. Great. Yeah. That's what we're doing. We're doing it because we're like, well, I'm tired of waiting for somebody else to say, go. Mm -hmm. You know, if you tell me action, that's when I get to work. Well, that's, if I get to do that five times a year, I'm lucky, you know, five times, you know, how often do you work? Not that often. And the older I get, the less I work. So there you go. Well, now I have a question because you were explaining why it was called Paladin. If you continued and you got to make a bard, what how like what would bard be? Because bards are my favorite because I'm a musical person. So like oh, what, what would like the inspiration behind a bard whiskey yeah. be? Well, here's the great news. So each bottle in Quest End is a continuation of an ongoing saga. So 16 uh -huh. bottles and each bottle comes with like a 16 page book that has art done by Tyler Jacobs, oh, wow. the modern master. Like Kate Welsh has penned this incredible journey mm -hmm. through the first book and then will continue through all 16. So each time you buy a bottle, the story continues with characters you know and love. Um, or those characters get killed. We don't know. It's, it's, it's ongoing. So the great thing is that Ali Ochoa, who is our master blender, is this incredible woman, up and rising star in the whiskey industry. And what we do is we're like, hey, Allie, Paladin is this. She doesn't play Dungeons and Dragons or any RPGs. Like we sort of explain Paladin, like Saren, right? Our lead Paladin, her name is Saren of the Pit. She's a Paladin born in the fighting pits in the, in the city. Um, and as we open the story, she's in the middle of a battle with, a, with the, the, the last fighter she gets to, if, if she vanquishes the last fighter she wins her freedom mm -hmm. and so you know that's where we start this story and that story continues but the idea is that we said to Allie is like this is Saren this is who she is like this is what we think she's going to be like um, and so we took she took that information Allie took that information and then translated that into like a whiskey and what that would what how how to interpret that character through whiskey and through flavors and through taste and like where it lives in the palate and the bouquet and she then translated that into paladin and i'm going to read you i'm pretty sure ryan just sent it i'm going to read no he did not send it no. Text oh. i'll yeah. send it right now <laughs> i was like this is so cool and then you're like he didn't send it i was like no. Yeah, no. but the tasting <laughs> notes right for Paladin are built on the character. The tasting notes for Rogue are based on the character. So each bottle will have a different profile. Each bottle will be uh, constituted in a different way, a different blend of whiskey. Who knows if we're gonna use whiskey all the way through the 16 drops, but each each drop will tell the story as it continues. Oh, that's so cool. Well, because I was just thinking too, I was like, because I oh, was like making, notes, okay, go ahead. Notes of, notes of vanilla and fruit, in keeping with the noble aims of Paladin, with an undercurrent of spice to reflect her fighting spirit. Oh, that's so cool. Well, because I was just thinking too, I was like, I was referencing because I like bars, but I was like, isn't the ingredients of a hot toddy, isn't whiskey in a hot toddy? So it's like not only are bard singers, but you would also like have to have whiskey in order to also make a, a hot toddy. Complete, it's a complete adventuring party <laughs> bottle collection. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. I love that. Yeah. I, it's a, th that would like, I would 100% want that. But my brother, who would probably get into DD with me, doesn't really drink. So he'd be like, I don't want this. I'm like, yeah, but I want it. And no one else can get with me. So it'd just be me like, yeah. anyone yeah. else want to like sit with Is me? And read the and, story. Yeah, you read would. the story with my whiskey. Um, it is so cool. Like, just, you know, 
I love when celebrities let their kind of like nerdiness show because I know I was a theater major I I know that actors have to be nerdy to get into this because it's acting if is a nerdy really craft nerdy really nerdy or really beautiful it's one of the yeah things. and sometimes yeah. both most of the time both because very rarely very rarely yeah very rarely <laughs> The, but, exception, the exception of the rule to have the ugly nerdy guy getting in. <laughs> but it is just kind of like one of those things where it's like it, it, it's nice to see actors just like showing that nerdy side and being like, yeah, look, we're all nerds. We we like to study characters and bring those to life for a living. And so with this this uh D and everything like that, what is like one thing that you haven't really gotten to dive in? post like this D&D that you do want to kind of also bring to life that is doesn't have to be nerdy but that might be nerdy that is something that you're really passionate about um that's a good question well I do think that like with Find Familiar we operate a lot like a movie studio so we like movie studios have like different genres they have Mm -hmm. you know the Academy Award films they have big blockbusters they have superhero films they have horror films like so we are going to introduce other things that we're excited about. So the good news is that the things I'm geeky about, say I'm excited about bird watching or if I love bird watching, mm-hmm. um, I could bring a gin. Strike that. Don't say, <laughs> kill that whole thing. <laughs> kill that whole thing. Don't say anything about that. I was trying to make a joke. Um, that, don't say that. <laughs> You're like, nope, not that one. But no, but if you, so... The question is, what am I geeky about? Oh, that you would love to do something to bring with. To life. Yeah, yeah. That's a good fucking question. I mean, look, I, listen, there is a world in which I love, this sounds stupid, but I love kids. I love my kids. I love being mm-hmm. a dad. So there is a world in which I was like, should I just do a dad podcast and sort of talk about raising kids in the way that I I like to raise kids, but not sort of celebrating kids. I don't know. That's something I thought about doing a podcast. But this podcasts are so fascinating. Everyone does one. And I have, I have multiple, so, so it, I, it's cool, though. Podcasts, podcasts are cool. I don't think yeah. they are. You think I have multiple are? podcasts. They're cool. What's your top three podcasts? My own or just podcasts in general? You have multiple podcasts? Uh-huh. I have, yeah, I have two that are based on filmographies, and then I have one that I do with my brother. So the filmographies, I have one that is uh, the Ford cast, which is based on Harrison Ford's filmography, Um, Mm -hmm. Padro Pascal, which is based on Pedro Pascal's filmography, and then uh, it's called And the whole podcast is just about those two actors? Yeah. And then I have Cinema Civs, which is me and my brother go through movies we loved when we were kids. And we review them like they had just come out. And we just like kind of talk about those movies and why we love them. Wow. And so we talk about them. But I do love like Adam Scott and Scott Ackerman do podcasts about bands. And they just started Bruce Springsteen. Oh, real? And they just review Bruce Springsteen through and through? Yeah. And they wow. did you talk, they did U2 and they did um, REM before that. And are they doing it from a point of? I know we have to get going, but are we are we doing? Are they doing it from a point of just reviewing each album and why they liked it, or are they doing like? Yeah. Or are so they it's doing like, like through like, songs. It's like a retrospective, but it's through each album. But then they also they're comedians, so then it like breaks down to through like they have dumb bits throughout them. So like they have a whole section in you talking you chewed me where it's like talking about turtle and they talk about turtle from Entourage. And. The, don't know why they just talk about turtle from entourage for like a couple of minutes mm-hmm. and then they go back into talking about like whatever that was in that ep- that album but it's uh they just started the springsteen one currently so, but like podcasts are still good there's yeah. a lot of them so the podcast would work the hard, the podcasts are hard to get out in the universe to make them people do also youtube they do youtube and they like do video components and then right. the podcast component. So then people listen while watching. Oh, okay, there you go. So right. you could do it. Okay. It's a lot of work. I'm building, <laughs> I'm building a whiskey empire. I can't, I can't, 
I can't stop for a podcast. <laughs> Whiskey Empire and a dad podcast. Yeah, but I do like pot. I mean, that's the thing. I like kid. I like kids a lot. So. You do a whiskey kid collaboration. Whiskey kids, perfect combination. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for talking with me today. I really yeah, appreciate it. You're um, lovely. Now I have to go find the forecast. Yeah, the forecast. Uh, but thank you so much for talking with me. I really appreciate it. And now I gotta find a bunch of people who will also drink whiskey and play D and D with me. There you go. Awesome. Well, thank you <laughs> thank so much. You. For